evening, good afternoon, good morning. Hope you're all doing well, Gonzo. Are you doing well? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Very well indeed. Nice and toasty in the man cave. Got the, the heating going. You know, all right, mate. I'm all right. You all right? Yeah, I, I'm not too bad. Uh, have you calmed down a little bit from Saturday? Yeah, yeah. I've had to take a break from it all, really. So I'm not as... Uh, I've not read the news as much as you would have done, so I've, I've not really been following too much for the last day or two. Uh, I think I've needed a break from it as well, to be honest with you. It feels like... Um, <laughs> it, it almost feels like it should be the end of the season. It, it doesn't feel like it should be before Christmas. I feel like I need a bit of a, a, bit of a holiday, really. It's, it's sort of sucked the joy out of watching West Ham at the moment, not just the watching West Ham. You know, like when you, when you do your stuff and then you... You look for the little snippets afterwards and, and player ratings. And you know what it's like when you follow yeah, West Ham. You, you sort of try and grab any sort of information and follow anything. It's been completely the opposite. I, I, yeah, it's sucked the joy out of it for me, really, mate. Yeah, I think it's more than football, to be honest. Not just West Ham, but West Ham in particular. I actually did okay Saturday night. You know, I, like yourself, had a little break from West Ham. Watched the last year Arsenal game. Played a bit of Xbox. Sunday I watched the football. And then today, I got wound up again. Uh, got, and the funny thing is it's not even Pellegrini it's not even the results that's getting me wound up it's the whole it gets repeated every time we're in a bad run of form um, which is it's, it's really pissed me off quite to be honest with you on Friday I was going to do a video on Friday night about how Usalos is starting to get the blame game the blame game is firmly laid at Usalos' door and I mentioned this to you in the review and I was going to do it on Friday but I couldn't be bothered I got in from work I thought can't be bothered I'm just going to watch football I'll do it on Monday now Leaving it to Monday was banking on something, and that was us not beating Burnley. Because if we beat Burnley, it would have stopped. The blame game would have stopped. You can't really then go on about it because people just said, oh, yeah, 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 stop being negative when we've won a game. But I thought, we're not going to beat Burnley, so I'll leave it to Monday. Well, no, I'm glad I've left it to Monday because it's got worse. It's got worse today. Darren Lewis is in overdrive. Clarendon Hughes is in overdrive. It's just they're all pinning the blame at Mario Husselos' door. And there's a, I've got a few issues with it, Gonzo. Um, are, are you okay to start with this topic? <laughs> you're, you're Mate, no, no, no. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm, I've chilled out significantly since the other day. You've got to be in your bonnet. Mate, you've got to let it out. Yeah, because I felt like after the Newcastle game, I felt like the vibe was it's Pellegrini's fault. He's not getting the best out of Scotland, which I agree with, okay? I think is the right, is correct. But, it's, but from Monday onwards, last week, it changed. And I just felt it changed because it almost clicked how much it would cost to get rid of Pellegrini. I thought, oh, crap, we can't get rid of him. Set this tune in the rear, stand by. I don't think they can afford to get rid of him. They don't want to pay the money to get rid of him. So I think they thought, who can we blame? Okay, well, let's blame Mario Husselos because he's the guy that's on a million. It's still a lot of money, but one and a half million get rid of him, it's, it's doable if they want to. And he seems to get all the blame laid at him. All of a sudden... Um, there's stuff coming out today that I just, I'm reading it I think come on where was this last week last month last year even all this stuff's coming out that they're trying to make on it's I don't want to say, say news it's not news because it's a year old but it's only just coming out now for example did you see apparently last summer Pellegrini and Husslos wanted Roberto as the number one not Fabianski they wanted to buy Roberto did you read that? I've seen that somewhere, actually. Yeah, today. It came out today. It came out today, or yesterday, or in the last 24 hours, that actually Roberto is who they wanted. Oh, come on, okay? Now, we do our best. Because we do these videos, we do our utmost best to find every transfer rumour going. So, a year ago, like if other other Sam YouTube channels, we're looking out for transfer rumours to discuss it. And we dismiss quite a lot of them. I don't recall di discussing Roberto at all. When we signed Roberto this summer... Nobody said, oh, that's who we were after a year ago. Everybody said the opposite. Everybody, even in the nose, said, never heard of him. Okay? So nobody had heard of him. But after he punched the ball in his own net, suddenly, Pellegrini and Husslos wanted to spend three to four million on him a year ago. Well, that's a convenient time for that story to come out, isn't it? So I, don't, I think that's a bit bollocks. Then it gets a little bit worse because actually. The board signed Fabianski. It was the board who signed him. Oh, well, that's convenient because you're only claiming Diop and Fabianski or everybody that's been signed. But anyway, let's ignore that a second. Let's go back to what we've been told. We've been told Pellegrini was approached in December, roughly, before he joined. He was still in China and he got approached and he agreed to become the West Ham manager after David Moyes. Okay, let's accept that, okay? I'm not 
I don't entirely believe it, but let's just accept it at face value because that's what we're getting told by the in the nose. Okay, fine. So how is it we're getting told on one hand, the left hand saying, oh, uh, Pellegrini agreed to join us in December. He's been watching every West Ham game. He's having to say on transfers. But now today, actually, when Pellegrini joined, the Fabianski deal was already so far in, they continued to go ahead with it. Oh, bollocks, you can't have both. It's one or the other. You cannot have both. You cannot have... We had signed Pellegrini. Everything was agreed to. Oh, well, Pellegrini became manager. We'd already decided to go ahead with uh, Lucas Fabianski. It's just complete convenience. And their stories don't add up. And this isn't the first time. I'm not going to go on about the stadium and stuff, but it's there's a pattern here and the pattern comes back to the board and that is we call it mistruce lying misleading I call it misleading because I think that's what they're trying to do I think they're just trying to mislead you now doing it again here using the likes of Dad and Lewis the Guardian did an article last week as well that using people close to the club to pin the blame of Mario Huslos and he is not to blame the manager is to blame for this I don't actually you know something I never actually blame the board at all until they start coming out with this bollocks. Now I think, right, okay, now it's time to blame you because you're going to blame the director of football for the transfer budget. Well, sorry, how the transfer budget was spent. Then this is where we have to question the transfer budget he was given. Because, if listen, if I want you to be my bodyguard, Gonzo, and I give you a pistol, I give you £500 and you go out and get a pistol and then someone snipes me, I can't complain that you never took out the sniper because it's straight away... Real, real dead. <laughs> well, you're going, to turn, you're going to turn around to me and say... Well, you never gave me money to go get a sniper, did you? You just gave me money, to, and I went out and got the best I could with that money. So, if it's Husserloss's fault, then it's David Sullivan's fault also for not giving Mario Husserloss enough cash. It's There's there's a correlation between budget, performance of direct, direct football, okay? Now, Roberto was a bad signing. We didn't know that at the time, because we didn't know him. Like, when we sat here, we said, all right, we've got Roberto in, fair enough, never heard of him. In hindsight, it's a bad signing, okay? Who's, I'm disappointed they signed him, especially considering who's the lost seen him. So either A, he used to be able to catch the ball in Spain and suddenly lost all ability to catch the ball, or B, he was ignored. It's one of the two. Um, there's no in between, really. So there's that. I actually wrote down three notes because I needed to, <laughs> to make sure I remember them all. But that's the, that's the three things that really annoy me. The stuff that's coming out does not add up with stuff we've been told in the past. So at some point... They're making stuff up and it's just convenient. All this new information has come out in the last 24 hours. They're blaming Mario Huslos. They should actually be blaming Pellegrini here, okay? I'm not saying the manager gets off with this. Pell it's Pellegrini. I still think we have a good squad. Pellegrini is not getting the best out of it. I think Huslos is... You can question Ayeti and Fernals, but I don't think you can judge them yet. They're not ready now and you could say to... You could make an argument. Well, they needed to be ready now, especially a Yeti. If he's going to be the second striker, you need to get in a striker that's ready to hit the ground running. We never got that. Okay. But even the goalkeeper, we bought a backup goalkeeper. What else are we meant to do? What else is Husserloss meant to do when the wage budget is decreasing? He's saving wages. He's not... What else are you meant to do? Obian left. Nobody came in. Are you telling me a director of football has surplus money sitting there he didn't spend rubbish I, I strongly believe every director of football spends all the money available to him if you say he, here's 50 million I would be surprised if he only spends 30 why would he not spend the other 20 okay he's going to get judged he's going to spend the most money he can we got told again by the same sources okay so if you're going to say that these sources are not correct these are the sources putting all this stuff out as well we got told the net the maximum budget for the summer would be 30 million roughly okay we got told that it turned out 25 million the money wasn't there for who's lost to go out and get another fabianski to sit on the bench at west ham it's just it doesn't oh, it, honestly goes this blame game is pissing me off it's actually pissing me off more than the results and that's not right but it is because the results can be fixed but what can't be fixed it's this whole culture of throwing your manager under the bus when the going gets tough. Look, David Sullivan, either back your manager or sack your manager. But he, like he did with Slavin Bilic, like he did with Sam Ardice, he does neither. He sits in the middle and he undermines him. He, it's, I seriously, honestly, Gonzo, I strongly think our board want Pellegrini to walk. They don't want to pay him off, but they don't want to keep him. So the only way to do it is undermine him. Um, 
a lot of people's comments and questions for this show is stuff about if Husserlos goes, does that put pressure on Pellegrini? Absolutely, and I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to crank up the pressure on Manuel Pellegrini because they don't want to pay him the money. It's as simple as that. And why? Why would they listen? Why would they pay fifty million? And I've seen on Karen and Hugh again about how oh we're gonna they're gonna maybe give him till middle of January. Oh come on, we can see this a million miles away. If they have to sack him middle of January, we know what's gonna happen. New guy comes in at the end of January and there's not enough money, not enough time to go buy a new player or anything. I can see it a million miles away. It's just listen, Mario Husselos, is he culpable for poor signings? He is, because that's his job. But if you're going to lay the whole thing at his door, which is being, which is happening, Pellegrini's getting off with this. Okay, it's completely covering up the bad job Pellegrini's doing. If you're going to lay all at his loss, then David Sullivan, you're also culpable for only giving him twenty five million pounds. You give him twenty five million pounds, expect a twenty five million pound return. And um, anyway, rant over, <laughs> over to you. Um, I, I don't think the. The propaganda, because what you're talking about is propaganda. I don't think the propaganda is half as powerful as you believe it to be, regardless of how much it's wound you up. I don't believe that it's totally taken the pressure off Pellegrini at all. I think the pressure is firmly on him. There's, if what you describe is a manipulation, and it's not started in the last couple of days, although I've not had my ear to ground. It started last week. It, it's, it started last week. Um... The trouble is when you manipulate and you feed people information with with a view to manipulating the masses, and us as the fans are the masses, so you choose your media, um, your outlets, and, and you release information. It's propaganda. It's to manipulate. It's an old, it's an old trick that's been going on I mean, since Roman times, for goodness sake. It's it's not. There's nothing new. Some people are very good at it. Some people are very smart at it, and some people are very bad at it. And the way that our club tend to do it, unfortunately, takes the fans for fools. For us to swallow it and us to believe it, we would actually have to be outright idiots for everybody just to say, oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh yeah, oh, now you mention it. It is who's lost, who's lost out, who's lost out. And we all go with our pitchforks and burning torches and uh, and... You know, that's not going to happen because people can read between the lines because people aren't stupid. So it's a it's a fool's manipulation. It's 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 it takes everyone else for being a fool. But actually, it's very transparent. It's it's not smoke and mirrors at all. And there's no smoke and there's no mirror. It's just transparent and you can see straight through it. So I don't think it's um, it's as effective as people think it might be. And the trouble is when you try and whip fans up into a fervour, you might you might end up with a result that you don't want. And if people aren't fools, and if the fans are not stupid, and they don't see through it, and if the fans don't buy into all of this, that it's Husserloss's fault, then the fans will look for someone else. And if your narrative has been Husserloss, do not bank on the fans making Pellegrini their target. They may well place their target elsewhere, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I, so I don't think that. That being said, and and it is absolutely their their modus operandi. Yeah, yeah with Billich, I even did it with Moyes as well. Uh, they put the feelers out, and what they try and do is they try and tap into a frustration. That's what they're doing. The fans are frustrated. We'll align ourselves with the fans, but we'll do it silently because obviously they're not doing interviews or anything anymore. And you're quite right what you say. It's a very tenuous and convoluted way of going about it because what you say is just to sack him. That's the easiest thing. This is very complicated. It's a, as I say, it might not be particularly sneaky. It might be very transparent, but it is complicated. It is, it is detail. It, it's, there's a lot of thinking going on involved here and it's muddled thinking. And as I say, you don't necessarily get the result that you want. What I would say about Pellegrini and Husserlos and all the rest of it. I looked at it the other day and it was actually the commentator. And the commentator said, oh, and, and Pablo Fornals um, for Villarreal or whatever, but he was previously at Malaga. Hold on a second. Was it Roberto at Malaga? Well, hold on a second. Pellegrini was at Malaga. Husserlos is at Malaga. And I thought, I'm sure we've had somebody else that's been at Malaga. Then I realised we actually sent Haksabanovic 
out to Malaga as well. So clearly, there's a bit of an old boys act going on. And we like a cartel at West Ham, a mini cartel under the umbrella. Because if you remember when Sam Allardyce was here, it was Sam Allardyce, Barry Silkman would get the players in. Sam Allardyce would get them. And then um, I think, um, I don't think, I'm not sure saying Silkman had anything to do with Allardyce per se, but Silkman was um, uh, was Sullivan's agent of choice, or so I, so I was led to believe. And then what would happen was Allardyce would get the players in, then he would sign them up to his agent, Mark Curtis. And there was one point where five, six or seven West Ham fans were under the same agent as Sam Allardyce. It was just completely unhealthy. Um, and and I, I just, you know, I look at that going on as well and I think, well, hold on, that's... The whole thing is is quite odd and it just, it just looked like history repeated itself. And I, I'm not sure that you can separate one from the other in terms of Houslos and Pellegrini because... For sort of numerous jobs now, they seem to be, uh, you know, completely entwined. But this is why this is why I I had an issue in the summer about Pellegrini choosing director of football. It was the complete wrong way around because you're always going to eventually stumble into this issue here. One of them would underperform, and then the other one sort of becomes under pressure a little bit off the back of it because they're mates at the end of the day. Um, we're now seeing the repercussions of letting the manager choose the director of football. It was a very stupid thing to do in the first place. And this is my point. This goes back to who allowed this to happen? David Sullivan. Who allowed Pellegrini to pick the director of football? David Sullivan. You know, if, if he was switched on, he would have had a director of football and worked with director of football to appoint the manager afterwards. And the strongest relationship, there should be two really strong relationships in my opinion, that is between the chairman and director of football and between director of football and the manager. The manager and the chairman don't even have to speak as far as I'm concerned. They don't even have to get on. It doesn't really matter. But the director of football should be arguably the most important person at a football club that gets the budget. He goes, speaks to the managers of what you want in. He then speaks to the scouts, gets them out and about and stuff. He's almost the key. So when you allow the manager to appoint the director of football, the key man then has a bias between the two other key people, which is the, the chairman, the co the main chairman, if you like, and the manager. We now have the man in the middle. Actually, he's no longer in the middle. He's took a step to the right where the manager is and says, well, I'm a bit more on this guy's side. Sorry, mate, because he's my buddy. I wouldn't have my job if it wasn't for him. So he's going to look after Pellegrini more than anything. That's where his loyalties lie. And I think Sullivan almost finds himself on a 2v1 situation here where actually... If he is angry, the two key, other key men at the club are going to say, well, huh, stick together a little bit. And why would they not? They've been together throughout their career. They obviously, they're clearly friends and know each other and stuff. And this is why I, I found it very strange when we appointed it. But it worked last year. Okay, It did work last year, in my opinion. Um, but now we're starting to see the repercussions of when it doesn't work. We're now starting to see the fallout a little bit. And I don't necessarily think this whole blame game is effective. I think a lot of fans do see through it. But there is also a lot of fans who might only read Clarendon Hugh. Don't read any other West Ham website. Don't, don't, don't listen to podcasts or watch videos or stuff. So they will read what they're given. And if they're given that it's Hugh's loss's fault, then that's all they're going to read. And I just think that when you say... Uh, I worded it badly. I do think the pressure is on Pellegrini from the fan base, but I actually think what was happening here, it feels like the board aren't necessarily putting pressure on Pellegrini because, like I said to you, I think Pellegrini almost played chicken and said, well, what are you going to do about it? Um, I, I still believe what I said. Have you changed your mind? You know, on Saturday, you thought he would he might get sacked. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Far from it. I, I, I still... Vehemently disagree with you there. No, I, I think, I think, I think they'll get rid of him. I, cause, just just because I think twenty million is far cheaper than one hundred and fifty million a season. When do you, when do you think the the time? Oh, I think it could happen really really soon. Actually, um, not not because you got to understand, not because I have any faith in them. No, 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 that's not what I'm asking. I'm, I'm we're trying to predict what the board would do here, almost. Yeah, no, I, I think. I think they're paving the way to sack him. I, I don't disagree with anything you said. Uh, you said a lovely thing. A lovely thing wasn't it? wasn't a lovely thing. It wasn't about flowers and holidays or anything like that. But you said a, a a poignant and accurate thing the other day when you said that you thought Sullivan would just be pleased to get rid of Hugh Sloss and then he can have his toy back. 
so he can start buying and selling. I said this in private to you, so people, people won't know what you're talking about. Oh, sorry, I thought you said, okay, well, it's so a good job I didn't say the other thing you said. No, it was, off the, it, was off the, it was off the back of uh, your video you did about um, how Sullivan and Gold ruined West Ham, and I started... Yeah almost ranting to you on, on whatsapp and messages <laughs> sorry, 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 I don't know why. I, it all blurs into one real life and videos all blur into one yes you did but you you know you very much indicated and, and i thought that's well, i even said to you i typed back to you didn't i, I thought that is that is accurate i think that is absolutely spot on so I, i'm totally i'm totally with the idea that that pellegrini wants to say i'm sorry that sullivan wants to slice out of there so he can start buying and selling again no problem with that at all uh, I just so I think that's happening, but I also think he is paving the way to get rid of Pelle, Pellegrini. As I say, this started happening a week ago, and, and in many respects, I mean, I'm going to say this. I've got mates of Claret and Hugh. I'm going to say this anyway, but you know, I, I don't blame them for running the story. But you know, I almost don't blame anyone for running the story if that's what they're being given. It's, it's whether they allow it to be manipulated. I was watching a thread about the West Ham Way podcast. They were getting accused of leading the witness during the week. People are saying, oh, it's not up to your usual things. And both them and, and Claret and Hugh would argue that actually, and I think even, I don't know, either Dave or X said, well, hold on a second, at the end we did say the board and the team have got to take some responsibility for this. But, you know, there were, there were people saying to, about Claret and Hugh that the same thing, all the things that you're saying, Jacob Steinberg was getting it a bit as well and i am i am no fan of jacob steinberg at all um you know i i think he has put himself in a very very awkward situation with west ham fans actually he's almost made himself an enemy of west ham he's, he's gone in and attacked west ham fans um and generalized about all west ham and and you know there's, there's people that we know and i don't like the way he's gone at them but what i would say in jacob's defense is he's no fan of david sullivan he is no friend of David Sullivan. I can assure you of that. And there's no way that he is being manipulated into feeding stories. I, I can tell you that now. Um, but what I do think is happening is he is getting leaked information. And then he's putting a story out there. As as you And, and, and again, I, I don't blame him for doing that. I don't blame Clarence. I don't blame the West End Way for doing that. In many respects, that they're getting news and information that we're not privy to. I'll tell you what I am pleased about, though, Gia. And I whinged about it very, very recently about not having access and not having this, that and the other. I'm actually pleased we don't at the moment because I'm pleased that we can sit here and be impartial. And, and there's actually nobody too upset there. There's nobody to think, oh, well, actually, if I if I write the wrong, I, sort of, well, don't, I don't write anything to my but if I say the wrong thing on a video, are we going to upset someone and lose our source or lose our information? I'm, I'm pleased I'm not in that position. So I don't envy it, but I do understand what's going on. That being said, I do think that they are putting the feelers out for sacking Pellegrini. Uh, um, and I do think there is a level of manipulation going on there and they're putting the feelers out. Can we sack Pellegrini? And I do think it is a very, very real possibility. How long? Lose the next three games, it, it could well happen, mate. But how, but how long were they putting feelers out about Billich getting sacked before they actually pulled the trigger? It was about a year. Like, Billich was forever... Three more games to save your job. Three more games. He'd win one. All right, another three games. It, it, it kept... It was on it, and, on, right. and on, right. right. And I don't want this. I don't want... He, this. I he, don't he, want. Got, he got he got streaky. That was that was the thing with Billich. I, I totally you you remember it totally right, but he would have a couple of results that would turn it round, and but, it would take the pressure but, off. We'd move a couple of places up the league. I, I'm I'm not sure this is gonna this is gonna happen at West Ham at the moment. That's that's the thing. I mean, it's it's quite clear. If we beat Tottenham and then get a draw against Chelsea or, or whatever, then, then then it's fine. I mean, literally the story goes away. It's as simple as that. But I, I think we're we're almost down. It's like when we do a video and we do a predictions video and, and some people say, oh, sorry, I disagree with that. But well, it doesn't matter if it's a predictions video. Come and see us at the end of the season. We'll see who's right. It's not an opinion. It's it's It will be proof fact. And, and I think this is this is going to come down to wins and losses. And I think it will be very, very quickly sorted out if we lose the next three games. I really do. I, th I think the Spurs game, if we lose that, that will really kind of pass up. Because I do think he's got no excuses for that because the players almost get up for it themselves against Spurs. We always do. Um, so if we can't get up for it against Spurs, then you have to look at Pelkey and say, when are you going to manage to get them up for it? But I don't want to see this thing with Billich. What we had with Billich every month, it was just 
He's got three more games. Polls. Oh, do you think we should sack him and stuff? I just don't want this to be the same thing with Pal Green. I think you need to back him or sack him. It's as simple as that. And we're, I just feel we're already in the middle, in a halfway point where they don't want to do either. They don't want to back him, but they don't want to sack him. So they're sitting in the so middle. So what's, what, what's back him, Gio? What's, what's back give him, him? Give Husselos money in January. So here you go, 40 million or something, go get two players or something, go get who you need. Because clearly they want a centre midfielder in the summer, they clearly wanted one. Okay, we've got linked to far too many centre midfielders to not want one. They, who's that Italian journalist that got yeah, uh, no, Sebastian? I know the, one. the, one, the he, one that gets everything right. He got Sebastian Aller bang on. He was, a bit, yeah. he was a bit too quick with his predictions. Oh, it was all done. It wasn't done, but he was... He gets the players right. He's been quite adamant in the last couple of weeks that Pellegrini wants two players in January. He wants a right back and he wants a centre midfielder. Okay, now that centre midfielder thing's not going away. It was the same in summer. We've got a link to all sorts of midfielders. Uh, Juan Orden, Jordan over in in Spain. Um, Juan Yama. Um, I'm trying to think of who else we got to, to. There was another Spanish centre midfielder, wasn't there? I remember uh, Joan. Was his name Joan? Yeah, that's the one I said. Joan Jordan. Juan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And there was there was another there's Labokta and that was another one that we got linked to a lot of centre midfielders. Okay, so you have to assume that a centre midfielder was identified, but the cash wasn't there. Okay, now you could say well you shouldn't have bought Pablo Fernandes, and I think that's a valid thing to throw at Usulos's door and say well why did you go get him if you really want a centre midfield? But in January I say you back him, I say you go get you give the the director of football cash and you go get him. Otherwise sack your director of football. You've got you, you cannot let him go into January with no money. It's, it's back him or sack him as far as I'm concerned. I've got a feeling, Gonzo, they'll do neither. I think we will be in this situation in January. I think we will win one, draw one, lose one, win one, draw one, lose two, and everyone will get upset again. January will come round, no money. Pot's empty. Then the unofficial things will come out that are either the, the debt's too high, we've made a thirty million pound loss last year. You know, this whole uh, we've already been Warned. Sean, Sean Weston knows his stuff, got good contacts. He's already warned us. He, he thinks the, the accounts will be out in December. £30 million pound loss, right? That's a warning. They're going to come out just before the January transfer window. So when the January transfer window comes around, they go, hang on a minute, do you not just read the accounts last week? Got the money, mate. Just lost £30 million. What are you expecting? And I just think... I, I think that's what's going to be the problem, Gonzo. I just think we've got... Um, he won't get back, and I don't think he'll get sacked either. And I think this. I, I agree with that run of results that you've just said. Win, lose, draw. Win, lose, draw. Two. I, I agree. If that happens, he won't. But I do think if. Well, I, I think we have, we have there is no evidence to suggest that we will win, lose, and draw, and then win, lose, and draw. There is no evidence to suggest that at all. There's no form. Um, you like your bets. You make up your bets. You make your make up your accumulators. Um, West Ham may well feature in your bets, but if they did, they wouldn't be winning, uh, <laughs> possibly or drawing a game in your bets anytime soon. That they would not be part of your racker. Um, them losing or conceding more than two goals or conceding ten corners, they that might might be in your bet. But so there's there's no form there for them. So I agree. If that happens, they'll probably stick with him. But the moment we get sucked down into that relegation battle, uh. I mean, said, you know, there's, there's a lot of people saying, well, hold on, we're closer to whatever. Fifth, I, I don't even... fifth and 17th, that's what you're... That, uh... that, that's, that's the stat. That's the stat. I'm hearing it quite a lot. Again, I'm, I'm a big one. I, know I'm, I repeat myself, don't I? I? I do repeat myself, and I say that takes the context and the detail out of it. It's a it's a, it's a cliche thing to say. Um, hmm, they're, 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 if you start picking at the fine detail, then there is uh, there's a lot more going on than that. And... Um, that that comment suggests. Well, do you know what? We're as near the top as we are the bottom. Everything could be, it could go either way. That's what the comment means, isn't it? It's you know, it's not cut half full. It's, it's, it's you know, you don't have to be cut half empty. It suggests that. But actually, if you scratch below the surface, that's not really likely to happen. That we're going to start reaching for the top as likely as we're reaching for the bottom. Actually, we we're going we're going in one direction at the moment, and it's going to take something drastic. Not just unnecessarily in a second, by the way. I mean, a change of formation, a change of team to bring uh, fresh blood in, a sort of switch around of things. It is going to take something drastic to arrest what's happening. If we continue to do what we have been doing, we're going to continue to drop. And, and that stat of being as close to fifth as we are to 17th or whatever 
is going to dissipate very, very quickly. It won't be something that people will even be able to say in two weeks' time. How are you, Paolo out? Are you uh-huh. finished with a blame game? I'm finished with a blame game. If I'm a brand now, and when they move on to the manager, then we'll start doing the people's comments and questions. Yeah, I, I think... Um, I think I've words, but, but the, the trouble is, it's like I said uh, in my video the other day, or whenever I did it yesterday, uh, recorded it yesterday, put it out today to dive, is it the manager one? Um, I, I, I said that I'm not the man to, to say who would come in. I did my lunchtime video, I said, you know, people like Eddie Howe and, and whatnot are not going to join. This this chap, this Frankfurt chap, he's not going to join. So, But I don't think that that's reason enough not to do anything. I think it's more or less the worst thing that you can do. Is is to to stay in a state of limbo because you don't have any idea of how to make things better. Um, I think again, it it's almost sounds like it's a, it's another cliche. Oh, I want to get rid of Pellegrini. Oh, well, who do we bring in? Uh, uh, well, okay. Well, if you don't know, we keep Pellegrini. Well, hold on a second. No, do some research. Find somebody. Put the feelers out. Let's know. You can find out. Do 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 I know who I think is out there that the board would consider? And it fits Tony, with it, Tony Pulis. No, it fits with oh, Neil Warnock. Jesus, yes. <laughs> he, he resigned from Cardiff. Did you see I know, that? I know. So he's I a, know. He's a, he, listen, he's a free agent now. Um, I think there's two managers. If Pellegrini was to go tomorrow, I think there's two managers that would very quickly become favourites for the job. This is not who I want, by the way. Just don't no, 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 don't shout at me. Neil Warnock and Chris Hutton. I think that's the two managers. The board would go one of them. Get one of them in. Even if it's just till the end of the season, get one of them in to keep us up. Okay, that's what they'll do. They'll revert back to tight. They tried the uh, the foreign man, the expensive foreign manager route. It's not worked, so they're going to revert back to tight, which is safety first, and that is the old British manager. Be th- Listen, we know David Gold and Karen Brady wanted to keep David Moyes. Okay, so they're probably going to be saying to Sullivan, "Told you, told you, he was cheaper. He this wouldn't have happened under David Moyes." If they might even go back for David Moyes. I can't see it, but oh, uh, yeah, but he, he, he should do that, and I wouldn't blame him. <laughs> yeah, I quite agree with you. I think he'd probably be looking. Hang on, that the geezer just spent two hundred million. How much am I getting? Um, well, you're not going to buy a new goal again, that's for sure. But I, I, I would you sack Pellegrini? Yes or no? Would you like to see him sacked? Well, no, no, that's a that's a nasty way. I wouldn't like to see anyone sacked. I'd like to see him getting less abuse than he's getting. Um, I, I don't want to. I think find it uncomfortable watching actually. Uh, but I, I would. I think I would get rid of him. Yeah. But I, I don't want to. Yeah. I, I don't want to see him squirm and stuff. I hate seeing that. I hate all that actually. I hate the hated Billich's last days and the way it was. I mean, I don't. I think Pellegrini's a good man, and I don't. Um, I don't think he needs it. I, I can't. He's I, not you, you know. Sorry? He's not done anything wrong. Like, no, he's just no, not you, up you've to seen, the job. You've seen the comments, Gio. You know, and I don't mean everyone. I mean very, very few. There'll be some that I'm not going to... I'm not I'm not going to say the words because I don't want to swear. But um, people will, 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 will call him rude names, nasty names. I hate him. He's a this, that and the other. And I'm like, well, you know he's not. You know. Um, and you can really not like the direction he's taking the club. You can not like his managerial thing. But I don't... I can't get venomous, and I don't know if I don't know if you we've not spoken about it. So if you've spoken to anybody that was near the front when the players walked off and stuff, um, it got quite it got quite nasty at the game at the Burnley game. Um, the manager did come on, uh, come, you know, there were boos and, and the rest of it, but there was a little. I wasn't there, so I'm giving second-hand information, but I've heard it of two separate people and t- two people I trust as well, by the way. And they both said the same thing. They don't even know each other, these two people, by the way. Um, and they both said that there was a bit of a a bit of talking going on between the players. And Rice, Snodgrass and Noble seemed to be having a go at a few of the other players, uh, which which is good. Of, of course, absolutely. And there was some way Pellegrini was sort of involved with, a, with some bits of shouting as well. So there's something going on. There's something going on amongst there. Um, and I don't want to see all of that. I'm, I'm Actually, I'm quite glad that, that, let's say, the British bass players start trying to rally everyone. That I like. That I like. Um, but I don't want to see a man suffer. Um, I, I'm not even sure why he's doing it anymore, Gio. You know, his, his wife still lives in Chile. I mean, his son lives over here. I wouldn't... You know, if he went back to Chile and, and enjoyed his vast wealth, I wouldn't blame him. I wouldn't blame him at all. Um, 
I, I think I think I almost there's a part of me that wants to hang on for the miracle in beating Tottenham, but I don't have any belief that it's getting any better. That thing that you said, the win, the loss, the draw, I don't think it's going to happen. I think in three games' time, we're going to be in exactly the same situation as we are. And before the Newcastle game, we were doing a Newcastle preview. I said, actually, Gio, I fear if we lose this, it's a real pivotal game because I think we'll go to Burnley and lose as well. I said that, and and, and, I, and I, obviously I meant it, and obviously I was right. But um, it's I don't see us winning the next game. And we can't... I don't want to be sat here in whatever it is, three or four weeks' time, saying to you, yeah, actually, Gio, I think it's possibly time for him to go up. I, th- I think it is. It's it's a difficult one for me because I want to say, not yet. I want to say, give him more time. It's his first real rough patch at West Ham. I, I'd rather back a manager. I've always I always like to remain loyal to the managers, but it's the fixtures that are upcoming which concern me a bit. Spurs at home, Chelsea away, Wolves away. Now, Arsenal at home is beatable, but if you don't get much points out of the first three, then all of a sudden it's not that be- not that winnable anymore. And that set of fixtures really worry me a little bit. And we need something. We need something different from Pellegrini. And I just hope that, that you know, it's probably more fool me here, but I just hope that that defeat against Burnley wakes a few people up, not just Pell, especially Pellegrini, but not just Pellegrini, but other people as well. I just hope, like you said, about, I just hope that that arguing thing was actually true. I just hope that Noble, Snodgrass and Rice are starting to hold underperforming players accountable almost and say, right, you need to do something here. We heard it last season when they got beat by someone and Mark Noble wasn't playing. He went down into the dressing room and let rip at them all after the game and stuff. He said, you can't do that here. And when Marco Navic played up, Noble went for him at training and said, you can't do that, West Ham. That's what we need. We need a bit of that. Hmm. And um, is it enough? I don't know. I, I wouldn't sack him yet, but how long do you give him? It's, that's, that's the sort of question now, really, isn't it? It's just how long does he get? Because if he gets beat by Spurs, then... What, what disturbed me, Gio, was uh, disturbed. Again, to, it's so easy to slip into into language. It, I think what surprised me, should I say, is his comments about being under pressure. Did you hear those? Yeah. Uh, he said, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm, the media and everyone can't put more pressure on me than I put on myself. I'm under no more pressure that I lose a game than I put on myself when I win a game. But what? What? Why? Well, that, that's crazy. That's like saying, oh, "Cause, look, cause you, you he know, feels you're... safe. He feels safe." Well, mate, mate, maybe. It, well, yeah. You know what? You may well, you may well be right. But I, I don't think he's doing that to to be cocky. In which case, say, oh yeah, well, that's it. Stick two fingers up. Well, you know what? There's no getting rid of me. But it's it's a weird. You wouldn't say that in any other job. Oh, you know what? It's it's the same for me at work, whether I turn up early or I turn up late. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> it's it's uh, you know it's it is the same, for me to be a, fair. Uh, well, it may be, you know, yeah, but you know what I'm saying, you know, it's the same for me whether I reach my targets or I don't sell a thing. It doesn't matter. It's the same pressure. It, it's not the same pressure. And, um, and 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 he is wrong, regardless of whether he thinks his job's safe or not. He must feel it. Be- he He's not Im- impervious to the booing. He must... There must be a, a, an he can't atmosphere lose. He training. Can't, he can't lose, though. Pellegrini can't lose. He keeps his job, but he gets a lot of money. He cannot. Pellegrini cannot lose out of this, OK? He either gets... I don't know how much he's... He's on apparently 10 million... Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, 8 million. Uh, 8 million a year. He's got a year and a half to go. 14 million pounds. Uh, so 12 million pounds, sorry. So let's just, let's just even round it down a little bit. He's going to get 10 million pounds payoff himself. So... He can't. He can't, he. It's a win-win for Pellegrini here. He keeps his job. He gets ten million pounds. And and I've got to the point where I'm, I'm a bit concerned. He's not that fast, which which is. I'm not. I just think he's almost like giving up. If you like, well, go, like I said to you on Saturday, go on then, sack me because then he gets ten million. Um. So I just think it's sort of like we're in this blur at the minute. We're in this difficult patch. Um. And it's not great. Listen, what we're going to Hold on, hold yeah. on. I've got to do it. I've just, you probably saw me tapping away there. I knew it. I knew I'd read it somewhere before. And, it's a, and, and I have here, and it's that Pellegrini's on a 12 month rolling contract. And it's it's in Claret and Hugh. It's in Football London. Um, it's on News Now. 
and it's in the evening standard and um and and this is going back to two i'll go back to evening standard uh just so anyone to know it's september the 5th 2018 if you want to go and search it yourself um uh and, and it's a, a standard, standard sport understands that Pellegrini's three-year contract worth five million a year is a 12-month rolling deal, which means West Ham would be obliged to pay a maximum of seven million in compensation should they wish to make changes in the next few weeks. Obviously, this is September then, so it would be it would actually be be less than that now. Um, Payoff to Pellegrini staff, including director of football Mario Houslos, would take the total to ten million, but the club have ruled out the possibility of sacking the manager. Um, I, I, I knew I'd read that. I knew I'd read it before. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying it's cheap. Well, just, if, it's, do it, if it's but, true, that becomes a that becomes a completely different yeah, yeah. question I, I, altogether. Go, go, go and search it. My Google search was Pellegrini twelve month rolling contract. And once I got past the advert, um, you know the the, the ad- advertised links on Google, the the next five stories were all that and all from different sources. But they all, they all come. No, they all come from the same one though. Football, course, London, course. football London get their news from Clara and Hugh. It's just recycled. Well, whatever. Yeah, but the standard, though. You, 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 know, you know what I'm saying? But I had I had read it before. But it's funny how that's not being put out there now, which would fit with a narrative more, which is don't sack him because we've got to pay him off 20 million. I, you know, actually, if it does turn out to be more like 9 or 10 million, then they just do it and then they say at the end... Oh well, you know it's um, well, you know, look, 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 look at look at what we've done. We've we've paid out twenty million. They want us. They, it, it's it's the begging bowl. It's 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 yeah. the it's it's the orphan Oliver with the begging bowl. Please, sir, can I have some more. And actually, you know they they give you a little bit, but actually they've got lots. You know, and I, I'm sure they they, they want to be seen as the saviors. We've heard this. We know this from when they took over. We saved you. We saved West Ham, and you were in debt. You were going out of business, and and all the rest of it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if actually the payoff for Pellegrini it turns out to be, as I say, eight, nine, ten million. But they would like to trot along the story. Oh, look, you wanted rid of him. It cost us twenty million. We didn't take. But we'd, our we'd loan find out. We'd find out eventually, and the accounts or something. We'd, we'd be able to find out. So it'd be pointless lying about it. But that does actually. Actually, there's more something interesting here. Dan Lewis is. Uh, he's done two columns. One today, one yesterday. I think it was last night's column. There's a couple of bits in there which stood out. Darren Lewis is very close to David Sullivan, okay? Yes. But there's just two things in there that I put I pulled out. First of all, number one, factually incorrect. He this he said he said about how the board he basically said about how the board are really nice. They allow managers to stay to the end of their contracts, like Billich and Moyes. Sorry, what? Billich? He sacked him in November. So factually incorrect. So I thought, hang on a minute, this doesn't sit right with me. But then it said about how Pellegrini is on ten million a year. I thought, oh, you just bumped his wage up by a couple of million then, because, like you said, it's almost like, well, I, I looked at it differently. Before that, I thought it was almost like, well, we pay him off, it's going to cost us 20 million, and this is why we won't pay him off. So it could be, like you said, it's cost us 20 million, but we'd find out eventually. Um, it's just... I, I don't think it, I don't think they mind that, you find it out eventually. I, I think, as, as ever, it's about getting through the moment. It's like with, like with the march, with the, with the Burnley thing, you know, and, and, and the, the protest. It's about getting through the moment. We're going to revamp the scouting department, we're, department, we're going to have video rooms, and we get you know, all this stuff. It's about getting through the moment. I don't I don't think they care if you find out in six months' time or whatever, because by that time, because everything's done on a wing and a prayer, so they're thinking, well, with God's grace and a fair wind, in six months' time, we'll be up in the Champions League places or pushing top six or whatever. Things will be, so things will be fine by then. The fans won't, won't know. That's where we're meant to be now. Of course, because that's what they, 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 they. But in January, when they want to take their 40 million, 45 million, we are meant to be in a position where we're in the top four, top six, where everybody says, "Oh well, do you know what? You know what? The board have taken their 40 million. At least we're debt free now, but we're riding high." Sebastian Heller is the top goal scorer in the league. Paolo Fornals um, playing like Lionel Messi, and so on and so forth. So they don't mind that. Then, then almost they can. They can take their money under the cover of darkness. They don't mind you finding out in six months' time that Pellegrini's payoff was actually not twenty million and eight million instead, because by then it'll all be all right. Yeah, Neil, Neil, Neil Warnock will have us in the Champions League. They'll be undermining the next manager by that point. Short in height and short in term planning as well. Um, what we're going to do now? We've got. I put up a post earlier on on YouTube just saying. Uh, sorry, I put up a last night saying it was tonight instead. 
Uh, we've got five comments here. Now, we were going to go back to the review, but we've, we're, we've been trying. I've been trying for too much, so apologies for that. So we'll do another video later this week, another cup of tea later this week, where we'll be looking at the transfer room. <laughs> There's some transfer rumours, but I don't, I don't have as much point looking at them with the, this uncertainty over our director of football and manager. But we'll also be doing looking back at the review, as well as any questions that you have, leave them in this video. But I'm going to do the five questions and comments that were left on the post because there is only five so it's and um, we've only got 10 minutes to go so we'll quickly go through them and uh, niall green is Husselos tied to pellegrini a real proper sporting director would be part of the managerial appointment process well you know my thoughts what do you think about that because i i also completely agree with that but what do you think of it because you sit and listen to me banging on about it but you don't really say much no 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 i i i, I don't disagree with you um i i i formed this opinion when um tottenham used to have a guy called frank arneson and um, he was their director of football and um, in many respects laid the br blueprint for a lot of what they did. I think the director of football should be the manager's boss. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's as simple as that. That, that really is the um, I mean, a di director of football. A lot of people, again, language is important. The di director, the, wor the word is key, director. So I'm not saying he's, he's an executive director. But the director of football has a place on the board. The manager doesn't have a place on the board. So the director of football is the board's... And I, I don't mean just West Ham. I mean a football club's board is the board's football expert. Yeah. It's as simple as that. They are, they are, the, they are the boss. They are completely separate entities. And, and what they allow you to do is keep an ethos at the club and keep a philosophy at the club. So it's, I, I've spoken about it before with Swansea. Um, Brendan Rodgers goes, you bring in a Martinez and so on and so forth. And, and all your managers that subsequently follow all play the same football. So any, anyone, anyone that comes in, um, that, that's going to fight. That's, that's going to be fine because they, they're all going to think that um, Leon Britton all fits their style, that Wayne Routledge fits their style because those, are, what's his name? Nathan, Nathan Dyer. Is that his name? Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, all of those players are already there. That's fine because the next plant manager that comes in is going to want to play that style of football. So they don't. It's not out with the old, in with a new. Someone comes in and thinks, "Oh, well, I don't. I don't want six foot ten players. I, I, I play with little geezers." You know, uh, if you pardon the expression, that's a terrible thing to say," uh, said Jimmy Savile. Uh, anyway, um, that's, yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll that's, a, that's a good way. <laughs> no, no, then, no, then, no, then. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> that's a good way. Make a make a meme out of that. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I won't go into too much. I will always say one thing. I think director of football get phased out eventually. Um, I remember Ian Airy, the Liverpool chap, he was talking about chairman being in charge of transfers. He says, ah, no, 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 you can't be doing that anymore. And you got asked about director of football, and basically you can't do that anymore either. Because Liverpool have a committee. They have like a transfer committee. So there's more than one person that's essentially director of football. And I think that's the future. I think that will become the future because you'll almost have like an expert in South American football and expert in European football. I say European football. You have like a Bundesliga and the Liga Un expert around the table and stuff. So um, I think it's almost like scouts, but they're a bit better than scouts. And uh, anyway, back to the, the the questions and comments and groaning, groaning, groaning perspective. He keeps changing his name. Yeah, I, I thought it was groaning perspective. But it's now groaning perspectation. Groaning perspective. Put back to that. If if. Pellegrini needs to be given next season. What kind of position do we need to do to, for him to justify that? Uh, glowing, yeah, glowing perspiration. All we need is is for us to be safe because then they don't have to pay him off, and then they can spend the last year looking for. Uh, I was going to say looking for a younger manager, but looking to see if first uh, uh, Tony Pulis fancies a job. Um, Charlie Date says, other than Roberto, I feel that Hussle has rec rec recruited some decent players. And in brackets, the best recruitment policy in my 16 years of Cintiq older. But Pellegrini plays them in the wrong positions or in wrong tactical setups. So why is who's lost the one being blamed? Oh, I, I, I know. Thank you for the question. I mean, you're asking. I wouldn't know. I obviously we're not. We've made ourselves clear. I, I think. I think. I think Gio has, has has given the best reason why who's lost may well be getting blamed. Indispensable. Is. It, off your pop, son. No one, no one blinks, do they? If you sacking a sacking a manager is a big thing, but club sack directors of football or change directors of football, and doesn't you don't always hear about it. You don't always know about it. You know, is Steve Walsh still a director of football at uh, Everton? Because he was coming in for criticism a year ago. Is he still there? I don't um, think so. But are you sure? 
yeah, but no, it's a bad point. I, I, I do, I do take your point now. Yeah, so I think it's easier to just uh, get him out of the door and without causing waves in the footballing world. Um, drum geese. I would love you guys to make a video where you both set out the West Ham team and FIFA and go over what formation tactics and players you would use if you were a manager and play a match. Lambs to the slaughter, my friend. Lambs to the slaughter. To be fair. Gio wouldn't stand a chance. I don't. Gio plays Call of Duty now. He's so behind, so behind on his FIFA skills. He wouldn't even know it would be embarrassing, quite frankly, for him. I think he's talking about us being in the same team, for God's sake. Oh, well, well, sorry. Bloody hell. Uh, wonderful. We'd, we'd, we'd kill him. Would you, could you pull me out from under the bus? Then can you go back and get who's lost? He's under the... <laughs> <absolutely. laughs> yeah, listen, before I could uh, bring Joe on, I'd have to consult my director of football, but maybe it's something we could we can look into, but I've got I've got a geezer at the moment. I'll have to give him a payoff. Um, the last one is from James Thorne, who says, I watched Wolves yesterday, granted on match of the day, but my point is still valid. They had willing runners, something we rarely see from our players. Even if they weren't receiving the ball, they were pulling defenders around, opening up space for attacking opportunities. Watching West Ham play this season has been so dull. The players look lost for ideas. I've always been a supporter of Pellegrini, but maybe his time's up. Thank God for the international break. Just a comment. No real question from uh, Jimmy there. But let's start wrapping this up. We'll do another video later this week. Wednesday. We're doing it on Wednesday, aren't we? It's early. Late. Yeah, we're doing it Wednesday. Late. We're doing it Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a bit later. Gonzo has uh, commitments. Yeah, he's got, I, was, I was just going to say commitments, you know. A bit mystery. It sounds like you're actually doing something exciting. But no, it's, it's, it's parents' evening. I'm going to find out how naughty my children are. Yeah, well, I think Pal Green is in for something similar as well at West Ham this week. Um, but yeah, Wednesday we'll be going live uh, with another cup of tea. Two cup of teas this week. Um, I just call this one cup of tea. To be honest with you, it was a bit clickbait. I thought if we just put something about Pal Green, people might go, oh. but if I put cup of tea, I was hoping more people would go, oh yeah, I'll. Uh. But I did put uh, Pal Green in the title after cup of tea, so. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, to be fair, mate, you think that's clickbait? I've clickbaited uh, tomorrow's lunchtime video, I can tell you. What is it? Can you give us a... I've just entitled it Relegation. Ah. Well, that sounds positive and upbeat. Uh, he goes, beauty. Uh, it's what I'm meant to talk about. There's nothing pink and fluffy to talk about. I, uh, I do want to say one thing, though. Tomorrow evening, I am joining the Free Hammers. I think I might be the third hammer tomorrow evening, or there be four hammers. I'm not sure. But I'm joining the three hammers tomorrow evening, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to, so you're not sick of the sound of me. Uh, come and join me. What time? There. What time? I don't know. It's not my gig, is it? No, hold on. Um, I think we li- Look, it's not for me to say, but I think I think Luke messaged and said, am I ready for about half six? Okay. Uh, go in, in, the, you... in the morning. No, I'm joking. Not if, in the morning. If you haven't already subscribed to the three hammers, type them into the Google... Google YouTube search bar the three hammers subscribe you see Gonzo and also one last thing happy birthday Hammers chat five years what of you, Hammers what are you hitting what are you hitting you're hitting a microphone the desk oh right okay sorry well, I'm pretending it's Sullivan you know <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, happy, happy birthday yeah uh, Hammers chat was formed five years ago by Gonzo uh, we, we believe it or not we have done videos how it was formed how we met but they're always too long. <laughs> we'll scrap them. But we'll do it one day. One day we will get round to it. But uh, Dr- Drunk, Geo, as well. Sometimes drunk. Anyway, uh, if you've enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're around here. And we'll see you Wednesday night. You'll see Gondor tomorrow night. Uh, and we'll catch you in a bit. Bye-bye.